Question 251. The nurse is caring for a female client following a Billroth II procedure. Which post-operative order should the nurse question and verify? A. Leg exercises. B. Early ambulation. C. Irrigating the nasogastric tube. D. Coughing and deep breathing exercises. Question 251 Answer. C. Irrigating the nasogastric tube. Question 251 Explanation. In a Billroth II procedure, the proximal remnant of the stomach is anastomosed to the proximal jejunum. Patency of the nasogastric tube is critical for preventing the retention of gastric secretions. The nurse should never irrigate or reposition the gastric tube after gastric surgery, unless specifically ordered by the physician. In this situation, the nurse should clarify the order. Options A, B, and D are appropriate postoperative interventions. Question 252. The nurse is providing discharge instructions to a male client following gastrectomy and instructs the client to take which measure to assist in preventing dumping syndrome. A. Ambulate following a meal. B. Eat high carbohydrate foods. C. Limit the fluid taken with meal. D. Sit in a high fowler's position during meals. Question 252 Answer. C. Limit the fluid taken with meal. Question 252 Explanation. Dumping syndrome is a term that refers to a constellation of vasomotor symptoms that occurs after eating, especially following a Billroth II procedure. Early manifestations usually occur within 30 minutes of eating and include vertigo, tachycardia, syncope, sweating, pallor, palpitations, and the desire to lie down. The nurse should instruct the client to decrease the amount of fluid taken at meals and to avoid high-carbohydrate foods, including fluids such as fruit nectars, to assume a low fowler's position during meals, to lie down for 30 minutes after eating to delay gastric emptying and to take antispasmodics as prescribed. Question 253. The nurse is monitoring a female client for the early signs and symptoms of dumping syndrome. Which of the following indicate this occurrence? A. Sweating and pallor. B. Bradycardia and indigestion. C. Double vision and chest pain. D. Abdominal cramping and pain. Question 253. Answer. A sweating and pallor question 253 explanation. Early manifestations of dumping syndrome occur 5 to 30 minutes after eating. Symptoms include vertigo, tachycardia, syncope, sweating, pallor, palpitations, and the desire to lie down. Question 254. The nurse is preparing a discharge teaching plan for the male client who had umbilical hernia repair. What should the nurse include in the plan? A. Irrigating the drain. B. Avoiding coughing. C. Maintaining bed rest. D. Restricting pain medication. Question 254 Answer. B. Avoiding coughing. Question 254 Explanation. Coughing is avoided following umbilical hernia repair to prevent disruption of tissue integrity, which can occur because of the location of this surgical procedure. Bed rest is not required following this surgical procedure. The client should take analgesics as needed and as prescribed to control pain. A drain is not used in this surgical procedure, although the client may be instructed in simple dressing changes. Question 255. The nurse is instructing the male client who has an inguinal hernia repair how to reduce postoperative swelling following the procedure. What should the nurse tell the client? A. Limitoral fluid. B. Elevate the scrotum. C. Apply heat to the abdomen. D. Remain in a low-fiber diet. Question 255 Answer. B. Elevate the scrotum. Question 255 Explanation. Following inguinal hernia repair, the client should be instructed to elevate the scrotum and apply ice packs while in bed to decrease pain and swelling. The nurse also should instruct the client to apply a scrotal support when out of bed. Heat will increase swelling. Limiting oral fluids and a low-fiber diet can cause constipation. Question 256. The nurse is caring for a hospitalized female client with a diagnosis of ulcerative colitis. Which finding, if noted on assessment of the client, would the nurse report to the physician? A. Hypotension. B. Bloody diarrhea. 
C. Rebound tenderness. D. A hemoglobin level of 12 mg slash DL. Question 256 Answer. C. Rebound tenderness. Question 256 Explanation. Rebound tenderness may indicate peritonitis. Bloody diarrhea is expected to occur in ulcerative colitis. Because of the blood loss, the client may be hypotensive and the hemoglobin level may be lower than normal. Signs of peritonitis must be reported to the physician. Question 257. The nurse is caring for a male client postoperatively following creation of a colostomy. Which nursing diagnosis should the nurse include in the plan of care? A. Sexual dysfunction. B. Body image, disturbed. C. Fear related to poor prognosis. D. Nutrition, more than body requirements, imbalanced. Question 257 Answer. B. Body image, disturbed. Question 257 Explanation. Body image, disturbed relates to loss of bowel control, the presence of a stoma, the release of fecal material onto the abdomen, the passage of flatus, odor and the need for an appliance, external pouch. No data in the question support options A and C. Nutrition, less than body requirements, imbalanced is the more likely nursing diagnosis. Question 258. The nurse is reviewing the record of a female client with Crohn's disease. Which stool characteristics should the nurse expect to note documented in the client's record? A. Diarrhea. B. Chronic constipation. C. Constipation alternating with diarrhea. D. Stools constantly oozing from the rectum. Question 258 Answer. A diarrhea question 258 Explanation. Crohn's disease is characterized by non-bloody diarrhea of usually not more than 4 to 5 stools daily. Over time, the diarrhea episodes increase in frequency, duration, and severity. Options B, C and D are not characteristics of Crohn's disease. Question 259. The nurse is performing a colostomy irrigation on a male client. During the irrigation, the client begins to complain of abdominal cramps. What is the appropriate nursing action? A. Notify the physician. B. Stop the irrigation temporarily. C. Increase the height of the irrigation. D. Medicate for pain and resume the irrigation. Question 259 Answer. B. Stop the irrigation temporarily. Question 259 Explanation. If cramping occurs during a colostomy irrigation, the irrigation flow is stopped temporarily and the client is allowed to rest. Cramping may occur from an infusion that is too rapid or is causing too much pressure. The physician does not need to be notified. Increasing the height of the irrigation will cause further discomfort. Medicating the client for pain is not the appropriate action in this situation. Question 260. The nurse is teaching a female client how to perform a colostomy irrigation. To enhance the effectiveness of the irrigation and fecal returns, what measure should the nurse instruct the client to do? A. Increase fluid intake. B. Place heat on the abdomen. C. Perform the irrigation in the evening. D. Reduce the amount of irrigation solution. Question 260 Answer. A. Increase fluid intake. Question 260 Explanation. To enhance effectiveness of the irrigation and fecal returns, the client is instructed to increase fluid intake and to take other measures to prevent constipation. Options B, C and D will not enhance the effectiveness of this procedure.